Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. The last topic that we discussed was SQS and I hope you have seen and practiced SQS as well. So let's leave it at that and let's jump into a new topic for now. So today we are going to talk about a very important service that we use in our daily life but we don't really understand what goes behind the scenes. So let's discuss the simple notification service. So if you are ready, let's begin. Before jumping into SNS, there are two concepts that we need to understand here. One is the publisher and the other one is the subscriber. So everyone here has used a news service before. Like you have your favorite news channel and every news channel has multiple topics that they cover. And each of you out there might be interested in all or a subset of the topics provided by the channel. So some of you might be interested in sports and movies. Some of you might be interested in fashion or politics. So there is an interesting provision here for the users. So we have our new service here and we have a list of topics that the new service provides us among which we have sports, politics, movie, tech and fashion as well. And then we have our users and if you see the first three users are interested in sports news and if you see the first user is interested in both sports and politics and the last two users that you see here one of them is interested in movies and the other one is interested in fashion. If we see that in a subscription model the news channel acts as a publisher and the users are the subscribers who have subscribed to the topic. So here the publisher sends messages to the users who have subscribed to a topic and only the messages which are intended for that topic will be sent to the user who has subscribed to the topic. Okay, so for example, if you like sports, so you will obviously subscribe to the sports topic and he or she will receive messages related to that itself. So the data flowing from the publisher is a stream of data divided based on the topics and they are explicitly intended to the users who are subscribed to that. And just like SQS, you can consider them like producers and consumers, but in a PubSub model or a publisher subscriber model, there can be multiple consumers or subscribers to whom we can send messages or data from a single producer. Just like if you press the bell icon on this channel, whenever I upload a video, you guys receive the notification. And that's how I am able to update you with the videos that I have. That's simple, isn't it? And now it's time for us to talk about Simple Notification Service. So Simple Notification Service is a fully managed publisher subscriber messaging service provided for microservices, distributed systems and serverless applications. So we all know what microservices are and what serverless application means of which the most common technique we use is AWS Lambda. And moreover, distributed system is like a system comprising of multiple components like load balancers, firewalls, caches, web server proxies and application servers. So for better communication between these components, we can make use of a pub sub messaging which obviously will help us to reduce bottlenecks when the application grows. So as per AWS, AWS Simple Notification Service or SNS is a highly available, durable, secure, fully managed PubSub messaging service that enables you to decouple microservices, distributed systems and serverless applications. That's what I just said now. Okay, so nowadays applications have become so much demanding that every application is designed to withstand heavy load and traffic and Amazon SNS provides topics for high throughput, push based, many to many messaging. So just think of what we learnt in the previous slide. Here SNS topics as we discussed for high throughput and uh, there can be many publishers and many subscribers and each SNS can have multiple topics for the consumers or the services that we want to serve. And the most important aspect of using SNS is that with Amazon SNS topics, your publisher system can fan out messages to a large number of subscriber endpoints for parallel processing. Remember this term fan out. Okay, we will be using this term a lot in the discussions coming up. And remember this, this includes Amazon SQS queues, 
AWS Lambda functions and HTTP or HTTPS webhooks as well. So these can be your subscribers when you use SNS. And if you need more, SNS can also be used to fan out notifications to end users who are using mobile push notifications and SMS and as well emails. Okay, so with SNS, you get the overall notification experience where your publisher system can send messages with SMS and email as well. So I hope this was clear. Let's move on. So let's see the visualization here. So we have our SNS message publisher. So this publisher can be anything, I mean, which can propagate data to our consumers. So if I would give you a real time example, let's suppose I have an auto scaling group it generates log so we have these logs generated using some metrics like failure state or desired capacity issue more like if the auto scaling is not functioning properly so okay so you have an auto scaling group and if suppose it is not functioning properly then you will have some matrices to determine what is the current state of the auto scaling group so what we can do here is we can publish this outage message to our support team using an sms or email by notifying them to rectify the issue. So this is a real time example. We have used SNS as an alert mechanism. And we have our topics based on which we want to publish these messages. So as you can see here, we have the Amazon SNS topic and as well, you can see the message flow here. So for SMS, we will create a topic for SMS and similarly for email, we'll do the same. And let's suppose we want to make an API call over an HTTP or HTTPS endpoint. We can provide the same using SNS. And the same goes if we are using a serverless application like AWS Lambda, which we will discuss in the upcoming sessions. So if you see the publisher sends messages to the topic and the services who are subscribed to the topic will be receiving the messages. And these are completely asynchronous. And I wanted to share this at the end that using SNS fan out, we can publish messages to multiple sqs queues as well here comes the durability part where if the message is not processed properly when pushed to sqs the message can also be pushed to the dead letter queue for later validation so now let's talk a little bit deeper into what is exactly filtering and what are fan outs so you can see an additional component here in sns along with the topic that is message filtering and you see here fan out isn't it so amazon sns helps us by simplifying our pub sub messaging architecture by offloading the message filtering logic from our subscriber systems and message routing logic from our publisher systems so when you subscribe to a topic the publisher and subscribers don't have to write additional logic to perform the filtering of messages okay that's the beauty of it and that is the publisher that is the publisher doesn't have to worry about if the message is sent to the particular subscriber and the subscriber also doesn't have to validate if the message comes from the same topic that they have subscribed. Okay, so it's completely preserved by the SNS message filtering. So many, so every message that passes through the topic will reach its destination. So for example, if you are subscribed to get notified for a sports event, in the form of an SMS or email, you will get the SMS and email as and when it is pushed by the publisher. Okay, so I know Sachin Elkar has already retired. Don't push this in the comment section. Okay, so event driven computing is something that we have to discuss. So this is a model in which subscriber services automatically perform work in response to events triggered by publisher services. I would give you an example here so that you can understand it better. So if I have to tell you about the events and if I ask you what is an event or if I ask myself what is an event, so it is basically an action or thing that happens or takes place. Like it's an event, isn't it? So based on an event, we start or execute a process. That is what happens when an event driven computing takes place. For example, you're purchasing a product online like amazon.com or amazon.in and you place the order. So that order event might trigger multiple actions. Like it might trigger a database operation to check the availability of the product or it will as well trigger the billing or discount service to point out what the current discounts are related to the product. Similarly, at the same point of time, another user submits a complaint which is not relevant to the database or billing, but it is relevant to the customer support. Isn't it? And if you see here, 
and if you see here each event is directed to an appropriate consumer okay so i hope you're getting the point so this design framework can be applied to automate workflows while it can help us decouple the services that collectively and independently work to fulfill these workflows so if you see here we have a lot of services that can act as a publisher starting from compute where we have aws ec2 auto scaling aws elastic beanstalk aws lambda elastic load balancing then we have the storage services like amazon elastic file system amazon glacier amazon s3 aws snowball and when it comes to database we have amazon dynamo db amazon elasticash redshift amazon rds AWS database migration system and we also have services for networking so it can be Amazon route 53 or Amazon VPC or direct connect and we have developer tools also that can act as a publisher so we have AWS code build code commit code deploy code pipeline and last but not the least we have our management tools as well so just like Amazon CloudWatch alarms CloudWatch events AWS Cloud Formation, Cloud Trail, and AWS Config. And for customer engagement, we also have Amazon Pinpoint and Amazon Simple Email Service. And Amazon SNS can filter and fan out events to the Amazon Simple Queue service. And these webhooks can be applicable to HTTP or HTTPS web endpoints to support the event driven computing. Okay, so I hope you got the point. These are a lot of information, but just remember that these services can be used as a publisher which can send messages to these endpoints okay so these are our publishers and these are our consumers so i hope you got the point let's move on so this is something that is very important if you want to design better applications in the future as you people are going to be world-class application designers listen to me very carefully okay so we can use amazon sns for system to system messaging with an Amazon SQS queue as a subscriber. Okay, so I said this line, we can use Amazon SNS for system to system messaging with an Amazon SQS queue as a subscriber. What exactly did you get from this? Okay, so what I wanted to say is AWS SQS or simple queue service is used to deep couple services so that they can perform their individual operations independently without blocking the caller to continue its own work. So SQS actually works on the principle of producers sending data or messages on the queue for each of its consumers to process them one at a time. And we are going to take this processing one step ahead by combining it with SNS by making our SQS queues as our subscribers. As AWS rightly says, Amazon SNS allows applications to send time critical messages to multiple subscribers through a push mechanism eliminating the need to periodically check or poll for updates. So when we combine both SNS and SQS, messages can be delivered to applications that require immediate notification of an event and also will be persisted in an Amazon SQS queue for other applications to process at a later time. Okay, so if you see here, we have our message publisher which sends the messages to the SNS topic and there are three SQS subscribers payment products and reporting and based on the message type these will be taken up or pushed to the queue or the sqs queue and will be processed by the consumers of the sqs queue and the best part is that if the processing fails they can add that to the dead letter queue as well so that it can be processed later and i would remind you that we have covered SQS in detail in the previous sections as well. And I would request you to please watch the video to get a better outlook on what we are discussing right now. The link is in the caption on the video itself. Click on the I button at the top right to check it out. Okay, and let's talk something about some of the features of using SNS. So the first one that we have here is message filtering. As I already have discussed before message filtering, uh, it basically helps the subscribers that we have for our SNS service to create a filter policy so that it only gets the message or it only gets the notifications it is interested in as opposed to uh, receiving every single message posted on the topic. So like as I said, if your consumer is required to process a message which is related to the product, it will only receive the messages based on the topic itself. And the same goes if it's a database operation or an SMS alert. 
And the second one that we have is message fanout. We spoke a lot about this word fanout. So what fanout means? So fanout occurs when a message is sent to a topic and then replicated and pushed to multiple endpoints. So like for example, multiple SQS endpoints, which helps us to process information in parallel by using the asynchronous event notifications. And for message encryption, Amazon SNS provides encrypted topics to protect your messages from unauthorized and anonymous access. So when you publish messages to encrypted topics, the Amazon SNS immediately encrypts your messages. And SNS uses 256-bit AES-GCM algorithm and a customer master key that is a CMK issued with AWS KMS or Key Management Service. And when it comes to enhanced security with message privacy, Amazon SNS supports VPC endpoints via AWS Private Link. You can use VPC endpoints to privately publish messages to Amazon SNS topics from an Amazon VPC without traversing the public internet. So that's a very good thing. And SNS, as we already have discussed before, provides mobile notifications. So Amazon SNS mobile notifications makes it simple and cost efficient to fan out mobile push notifications to operating systems like iOS, Android, Fire OS, and other operating systems like Windows and Baidu based devices. You can also use SNS to fan out text messages or text SMS to 200 plus countries and fan out email messages using SMTP. So now, last but not the least, let's talk about the cost usage of SNS. So starting off with the good part, there is no minimum fee and you pay only for what you use. So users would have to pay $0.50 per 1 million Amazon SNS requests. And if we convert that to Indian rupees, it is around 37.36 rupees per million and 0.06 per 100,000 notification deliveries over HTTP. And if you convert that to Indian rupees, we have 4.48 rupees. And next we have $2 per 100,000 notification delivered over email. And that is in Indian rupees, 149.45 rupees. And for SMS messaging, users can send 100 free notification deliveries. And for subsequent messages, charges will vary by the destination country. And Amazon SNS also provides a free tier. Good thing for all the free tier people out here. Uh, so where users can get started with Amazon SNS for free. So there is no excuse here. Create your free tier account now and start practicing SNS. And each month Amazon SNS customers incur no charge for the first 1 million Amazon SNS requests. Okay, I'm sure that nobody here will be able to make 1 million Amazon SNS requests on a free tier. If you do, that's well and good. Please share with us as well. And there are no charges for the first 100,000 notifications over HTTP and no charges for the first 100 notification over SMS. Okay, so even if you send like 50 to 60 notification, that's well and good on SMS for testing. And there are no charges for the first 1000 notifications over email. So you might ask, are there quotas for the number of topics or number of subscribers per topic? So what Amazon tells us that SNS offers 10 million subscriptions per topic and 100,000 topics per account. That's a lot of subscriptions. And next thing that you might ask like how many, how much and what kind of data can go in a message. So except for SMS messages, Amazon SNS messages can contain up to 256 KB of text data, including XML, JSON and unformatted text. And each 64 KB chunk of published data is built as one request. So if you do the maths here, if you send 256 KB of SNS message, it will be considered as four requests. Okay, so each message or each SMS message, not SNS, I'm talking about SMS. Okay, so each SMS message can contain up to 140 bytes. And last but not the least, SNS provides 200 filter policies per account per region that can be applied to the topic. Okay, so that was a lot of information and I want you guys to read this in the documentations as well for more information. Okay, so if you liked what you saw, please hit the like button comment on what you liked, what you didn't, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's be friends on Instagram. Join me at Tougher Apollo and to watch more, please click on the videos on the tab shown in the screen. Until then, it's Pythaholic signing off.